Hi, my name is Rohit Ponce, and today I'm going to be giving a presentation on using machine learning to diagnose pneumonia. Hello, my name is Rohit Ponce, and today I'll be talking to you about how I use machine learning to diagnose pneumonia from chest x-rays. So a little bit about myself. I'm a junior at Niqua Valley High School in Naperville, Illinois. I'm involved in several extracurricular activities, including speech team, youth and government, Wild Scats, which is a local jazz group, Maui Leadership, com and Computing Club. Over the summer, I did an internship at Northwestern, where I worked with a neuroscience PhD student. I designed fMRI stimuli for her experiment, which analyzed fMRI images for mobility in stroke patients. I also solved some hardware compatibility issues and performed some basic data analysis on optic fiber glove sensor data and created several manuals and video guides. In addition to interning at Northwestern, I also attended the Wolfram High School summer camp in Waltham, Massachusetts, where I worked on the project I'm gonna be telling you about today. So today I'll take you through the process through which I created my project. Before I continue, I'd like to thank my mentor, Michael Kaminsky, for helping guide me. In addition, I would like to thank uh, other mentors such as Rick Harrigan, Andrea Griffin, Douglas Smith, and Greg Hurst for helping me. Finally, I'd like to thank my parents for encouraging me to pursue my passions and keep learning. So here's some background information. Pneumonia is an infection that causes inflammation in one or both of the lungs. Bacteria, viruses, and fungi are all organisms that cause pneumonia. Bacterial pneumonia is the most common type and is caused by bacteria that multiplies in the lungs. Viral pneumonia is caused by an array of viruses, the most common one being influenza. Although the severity of pneumonia can vary, young children, seniors, and people with weakened immune systems are the most vulnerable. The CDC reports that one million people are hospitalized due to pneumonia every year. And unfortunately, 50,000 people die from this infection every year. Early and proper diagnosis is key to decreasing the mortality rate of a patient. Conventional diagnosis methods that uh, like solely examining a patient's medical history or symptoms have their shortcomings. And other methods like blood tests, pulse oximetry tests, which look at blood oxygen levels, and the sputum test are more invasive but get the job done. Chest x-rays have long been an efficient and reliable diagnostics tool for pneumonia. Although these tools are reliable, human error can play a huge role in the proper diagnosis and hence the well-being of a patient. In fact, Dutch researchers who published their findings in the European Respiratory Journal found that of 140 patients who had the pneumonia diagnosed by x-ray, certified doctors initially thought only 41 of them had the severe lung infection. My project uses a convolutional neural network to diagnose the type of pneumonia that a patient has and the location of the pneumonia to reduce this margin of error with doctors. Since pneumonia is an airspace disease, patients' airspaces are filled with bacteria, viruses, pus, and other microorganisms. A diagnosis is determined by infiltrates, or white spots, the loss of diaphragmatic shadows and evidence of pulmonary consolidation, or areas of the lung that are filled with liquid instead of air. I used transfer learning with my neural network. Transfer learning is defined by the book Deep Learning as the situation where what has been learned in one setting is exploited to improve generalization in another setting. Essentially, what this means is that a pre-trained neural network is used as a starting point for a second task. I used ResNet 50, an architecture that was released in 2015 by Microsoft Research Asia. This network was originally trained on 1.2 million images with 1,000 classes. The immense computing power, time, and resources, and knowledge dedicating to perfect this network made it a great neural network for transfer learning. Here's an example of ResNet 50 in action. It correctly predicts that this image is a golden retriever. As you can see, I set the program to give me the top 10 probabilities of what it thought the image was. There are two notable layers in this network, uh, the linear layer and the softmax layer. First, 
The linear layer maps the features processed by the other layers to the classifications given. Classifications, or classes, are the different objects the neural network is trained to recognize. In the standard ResNet case, the classes are the thousand different objects. In the case of my project, my linear layer will be trained to recognize a normal chest x-ray, one with bacterial pneumonia, and one with viral pneumonia. Second, the softmax layer determines the probabilities of what the image is. Again, here we see the probabilities of what the neural net thought the golden retriever was. The top results are golden retriever with 42%, redbone with 28%, iris setter at 8%. Clearly, the golden retriever's classification was the highest, the neural net, so the neural net thought it was a golden retriever. Here, I removed the linear and softmax layers. These layers are currently configured to recognize 1,000 classes, and I only need them to recognize three classes of information, uh, normal bacteria, pneumonia, and viral pneumonia. I will add these two layers later on. Below here, I replace the input layer to receive an input of image dimensions 512 pixels by 512 pixels. I will configure my training images to be at this size. Next, I added three layers to the neural net. The resized net here will extract features from the data set. This new neural net called LearnNet will be used to interpret the features and output what it thinks the input image is. The three layers I will do this are the linear net and softmax layer that I explained earlier and the dropout layer. The dropout layer is a component of the neural network that prevents co-adaptations of the neural net by randomly dropping out layers when training the net. This is a crucial part of the neural network because it's used to help the network improve its accuracy and reduce overfitting, or the tendency of a neural network to be extremely specialized to a limited set of data points. In other words, this neural net becomes very good at recognizing images in the data set that you've given it to learn with. Overfitting is not desirable because it makes the neural network very inefficient on data points outside of the training set. Additionally, I specified the output as 0, 1, or 2. 0 means a normal chest x-ray, 1 means viral pneumonia, and 2 means bacterial pneumonia. To recap, the linear layer made the features from the above layers, map the features from the above layers to the three classes. And the softmax layer determines the probabilities of these features, and the dropout layer is used to help reduce overfitting. The Kaggle data set that I used had over 5,000 images when I downloaded it to my computer. I imported the files from their respective folders here. The virus and bacterial pneumonia files were found in the same folder, so I used a simple separating sort tool to organize only the images of a certain class to their corresponding variables. I conformed the images to have dimensions of 512 by 512. I did this because I specified in the input layer to take images of only those dimensions. Later, I adjusted the way I conformed my images by augmenting the data set to improve my neural net. By altering the data set, my neural net would become adapted to a greater variety of images. I made 40% of the images undergo a rotation via rotate image, and I made another 40% of the images undergo a perspective transformation via shear image. An important idea to consider is that your neural net is only as good as the data that you feed it. By augmenting the data, one can prevent the neural net from learning irrelevant patterns and thereby improve the accuracy. Here you can see a sample effect of the random transformations and its effect on the images. So here, two separate neural networks are created. One, the resize net, extracts features or processes the image using the neural net to obtain some key information about the image. The other, the learn net, which has the linear softmax and dropout layer, interprets the features and determines the output. By creating two separate neural networks, we can, we can pre process the data instead of processing the data repeatedly, as we would have to do if the resize net and the learn net were combined. Here, the feature extracted images undergo two processes. First, the images are mapped to certain numerical codes. Normal chest x rays are mapped to code zero. Virus chest x-rays are mapped to the code one, and bacterial chest x-rays are mapped to the code two. The images are mapped to the code, so the neural network knows the identity of the images when training the network. 
In addition, the codes are used when the train network is given an image and determines a diagnosis. For example, if the train network is given a normal chest x-ray, then it should output the code zero. After mapping the images to the codes, the process images are set, uh, the process images are combined into one massive list, which are partitioned into a training set and a test set. The training set will train the network and determine the proper weights needed to recognize the images properly. The test set will be used to check the true progress of the neural network. Since the neural net is never trained on the test set, it would serve as an objective indicator of the progress of the accuracy of the neural net. Finally, after the data was pre-processed and had its features extracted, I was able to train my neural net. I Trained the neural net network four separate times, each with different settings, and each had different accuracies. The regular data set with 35 rounds of training had the regular data set with 35 rounds of training had an accuracy of about 24.9%. The regular data set with 70 rounds of training had an accuracy of about 19.9%, and the augmented data set with 35 rounds of training had an accuracy of about 20.9%, and the augmented data set with 70 rounds of training had an accuracy of about 17.4%. Below is an image of a loss function and the error rate for the augmented 70 round neural net. I use this neural net in the final product because it was the most accurate. You can see that there's a graph of the error rate for the training set and the testing set, and there's something called a loss function. A loss function is a way of evaluating how well your, algor your algorithm models your data set. After the neural network was done training, I exported all the files for use on the microsite. Now I'll talk about the second part of my experiment, determining the location of the pneumonia. Four separate neural networks were created to determine the location of the pneumonia. Left virus, right virus, left bacteria, and right bacteria. I evaluated the left lobe images separate from the right lobe images because the heart is visible as a white blob, much like a pulmonary consolidation on the chest x-ray. The neural net could butcher the diagnosis if the lobes were combined. Evaluating the lobes separately for each type of pneumonia helped ensure the accuracy in location recognition. For the pneumonia location detection part of this project, a subset of the data was created. 100 images of the left lobe normal and the right lobe normal each, and 100 images of the left lobe virus, right lobe virus, left lobe bacteria, right lobe bacteria, pneumonia, each were selected to train four separate neural networks to help determine the location of the pneumonia. Here are the statements I used to import the unedited chest x-rays. Here are the functions which were used to edit the images, width resize and crop resize, crop finder. Both are used in conjunction to crop the image. The number of black pixels on both sides of the image are found at five separate places. The greatest amount of pixels for both sides are used to crop the image. These functions were useful because it almost always placed the spinal cord in the center. And as a result, the images could be correctly cut and interpreted by the neural network. After using this method that I created to edit the images, this function was used to separate the images into halves. If a certain image was in the left lobe virus data set, only the left side was extracted. These operations were performed on all of the groups of the data. The ResNet50 neural net was used for transfer learning with a similar setup to the neural network created in the main diagnosis. A half left net was created with a dropout layer, linear layer, softmax layer, and output of two classes. The outputs were zero and one. Zero meaning that the chest x-ray given has a normal, normal diagnosis, which means no pneumonia, and one meaning that the lungs had pneumonia. This sequence of steps was used for all the other four networks. The trained files were exported for use on the microsite. Here are the error rates for the location detection in neural networks. So virus left was about 5%, Virus right was about 5%, bacteria left was about 0%, and bacteria right was about 15%. It can easily be determined from the size of the data set and the results that the neural nets overfitted to the data. 
Increasing the actual accuracy of the neural nets is a project I intend to complete. Using the exported neural nets, I created a microsite that looks like the following. So it takes an input of a chest x-ray and gives you the diagnosis of which type of pneumonia it is and if, like, which side, which lobe it's present in. Uh, I also simulated a real use case of my program by taking a picture of the x-ray from my computer screen, like someone would take a picture of the chest, like someone would take a physical picture of a chest x-ray. I uploaded the image to my program and found some success. So to conclude, I created a transfer learning neural network which successfully diagnosed pneumonia with an accuracy of about 83% and accurately detected the location of pneumonia with an average accuracy of about 93%. Data editing and augmentation procedures and increasing the amount of training rounds helped increase the accuracy of diagnoses. Currently, two other Wolfram High School camp campers and I have made a team for a Kaggle competition by the Radiological Society of North America. Uh, we hope to place among the top teams and learn more about machine learning while we're at it. Some future improvements include improving the image formatting function to make the current program more compatible with poorer quality chest x-rays. Also, thermal images have proven to be a crude means of diagnosing pneumonia using a similar neural network setup except with thermal images to diagnose pneumonia would be a useful tool for someone who, for someone who doesn't have access to chest x-rays. Also, further data augmentation to improve accuracy of the neural network uh, could prove to be beneficial. Uh, using a patient's history as well as image analysis to offer a more holistic diagnosis is also a project that I'm considering undertaking. Um, thank you for listening. Do you guys have any questions? <laughs>